Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's YouTube video is me back in War Thunder Ground Forces. It's an arcade battle and domination match mode. And of course it's an arcade battle because there's no way I have any kind of skill to play a realistic battle in this game. Especially not considering the way the armor mechanics work. As the battle starts off, I start off by grabbing my M22, the fast little light scout tank, and of course you can see there, drifting that hardcore. Rush right up to the A cap point that I know is going to be pretty popular because it's the central cap point right in between the two teams, where both teams have the B and C cap points respectively on their own. Now I am parking myself up by this ridge here so that uh, pretty much anybody that's approaching is going to have to come around the ridge to deal with me. I do manage to secure the A cap point as I leave that and an M10 comes right around the corner. Unfortunately I miss my first shot as I donk it into his return wheel. And the M10 manages to knock out my loader and gunner so that means I have no way to shoot at this guy. M22's got a little 37mm gun and for the most part that 37mm gun is absolutely worthless shooting at pretty much anything. But an M10 has very light armor because it's a tank destroyer, so you can actually penetrate the armor on that with a pretty quick reload. Unfortunately, the M22 also has very light armor, and pretty much any shot from any angle is going to kill your entire crew every single time, set you on fire, or light off your ammunition. So, I meet a very quick end. And of course now, the enemy team holds both the A and the C cap point, which means my team losing those tickets pretty damn quick. I do spawn back at the same base location as I start to push up here, and I'm keeping an eye on the minimap there, and I'm going to come over this ridge line so that there's that hill, that larger ridge line that's in the way, so that the tanks that are at the A cap point can't immediately shoot at me as I come cresting the hill. The Sherman might have a sloped frontal plate, but other than that sloped frontal plate, it really does not have a lot of armor. And even then, that sloped frontal plate armor is absolutely trash, as it feels like every single thing with a gun that's at least 75 millimeters or bigger can cause you some serious problem. Managed to take out the enemy M22 that was on a scouting run here, as another little light scout tank pops up around the side of this ridge line. And I start putting 50 caliber rounds into him. And you can see that the 50 caliber rounds really are penetrating that armor pretty damn well, as I'm trying desperately to knock out his crew, among other things. I do knock out one of the turret people, so I'm hoping that it's going to be able to um, not shoot me. As I opt to switch focus over to the M10 there briefly to try and knock out some of its crew as well, because I don't need that M10 shooting at me. That would be very bad. It has a 76mm gun, and that 76mm gun will more than likely penetrate my armor at almost any angle, because in the Sherman's armor is absolutely trash. The Sherman, unlike its other allied counterparts, absolutely did not have very good armor because it was a mass-produced vehicle. The idea here much along the Soviet doctrine was we'll just make a metric ass ton of these and put them out. Now the Sherman did go through several iterations but even the later models with heavier armor and bigger 76 millimeter guns were still not particularly good. Now I'm pushing up here into the A cap point and I'm not alone fortunately so this capture is gonna go very quickly as we get up point over the ridge here, start shooting the enemy vehicle that's up on the ridge, get some 50 caliber shots out there, can cause some damage to tracks and whatnot, manage to set a fire by destroying a fuel tank, and trying desperately to kill pretty much anybody who's up on that ridge. And it's at this point that I realize that I'm now out of ammunition. Completely out of ammunition, I took the advice from a previous video and avoided going into combat with a full ammunition load. Unlike World of Tanks, War Thunder allows you to replenish your ammunition so long as you're sitting inside of a captured zone. So you'll notice here that I'm slowly gaining one round of ammunition back. And that's kind of an important thing in this game because it does mean that you can go in with a limited ammunition supply 
And then as long as you hold on to a capture point and decide to sit in that capture point for a little bit, you can replenish your ammunition. Now I push up here to the uh, edge of the zone. I still need to stay in that zone in order to continue to replenish my ammunition. But I'm pulling back and I'm using the rocks here to protect me against anything from flanking shots. And I'm keeping the front of my tank pointed and slightly angled. Given my experiences, that's probably not going to help me all that much if something in a heavy tank like a KV-1 decides to roll over that hill. But, something that has maybe a smaller 37mm gun or even a weak 75mm gun like the Sherman will at the very least have a chance to ricochet. And speaking of things with smaller guns, I managed to cause some serious problems to that M5 Stewart. At this point, my team now holds the A and B cap points, and the enemy team is starting to bleed tickets. But you'll notice that my team has more players still in the game. It's at this point that you can really start seeing a turning point in this conflict, as the enemy team is no longer able to effectively push. They're down two players compared to my team, which has only lost one. And they're losing more and more as we're knocking out more and more tanks. Now, I am effectively just sitting up here in the cap point, and I'm going to sit here for a little bit longer than I needed to, mostly because I'm waiting for my team to get bravery pills and push up. In my experience, if you find yourself in this situation, yeah, well, going up and getting more kills and doing more damage is definitely fun and something that's enjoyable. It's not a necessity. At this kind of point, I'm in a defensive position, and then, again, unless somebody in a heavy tank rolls over one of those ridge lines and immediately hits me, I'm in a pretty good position to hold myself and defend this point. So, pretty much just going to stay here for a little bit while we assess the situation. The M4 Sherman, though, throughout history, did go through a number of iterations but it's the early versions here in War Thunder that are really, really just terrible. And they're even more terrible when they're stock. I just got myself into the M4A2, which still only has a 75mm gun. But where this vehicle I'd played with the crew and had unlocked everything, new tracks, new engines, ball bearings, all of that, the new vehicle completely stock with nothing unlocked is very, very terrible. It's like taking out a used rust bucket. And so I can honestly say that the grind to get those new modules unlocked is turning into quite a chore. I call in an artillery strike where there's a heavy tank that I know has been sitting in one spot for a while, and I'm looking at the situation and we do have a friendly vehicle that is down in front. And it's about this point that I realize that I've maxed out on my ammunition loadout. The max ammunition that I selected to take into battle, which is 17 rounds, I've changed that since then to 20, means that even while reloading at the base, I'll only ever peak at 17 rounds. Now the enemy team has lost even more tanks, and at this point there are not many players left in the game on their team. So I feel comfortable and confident pushing up here is that M6 is preoccupied with my allies off the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come around here and try to get some flanking shots. Again, I'm using the rocks as cover as I push up here, and the 75mm gun fails to penetrate anything. But I do manage to find the one weak spot on the M6 as he tries to turn his turret towards me, which could have been pretty bad as he's got a 76mm gun, and I punch a shot right through that weak spot on the frontal armor there, that flat angled bit. But here you can see the problem with the 75mm gun on the Sherman, as I'm shooting the front of a T-34. The T-34 doesn't have particularly good armor by comparison, but it is very well sloped, and this particular T-34 actually has some oblique armor packaging added, some additional spaced armor there that's effectively causing all of my shots to not penetrate. And you can see that's really kind of a big issue for me. But 
that vehicle's gone and there are no more enemy players left. The enemy team no longer has any tickets left available. In this battle, though, surprisingly enough, I did incredibly well. Uh, just look at all of the rewards, all of the XP earned there. Very happy with this outcome, actually. This happens to be my uh, best ground forces battle that I think I've ever had. And, of course, it just happens to be in the Sherman. Now, I do have the Tiger and the Panther and the Panzer IV, but I don't do very well in them. Now top of the team for XP earn, very surprising there, but I did get the most kill assists, which does make me happy, so that's certainly a plus there. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, as well as my live streaming schedule, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and the channel, you can do so by becoming my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a World of Warships replay that you'd like to see feature on my channel, you can send it to my email. And if you feel so inclined to watch me play World of Warships or fail at other games like War Thunderground Forces, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.